one girl jokingly said, she's like, oh, we can just paint their faces black. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I want to talk about something that's a bit more serious, you know, something that maybe some of you can relate to, maybe some of you don't relate to. Um, just to start off, my name's Maka, I'm 18, and I just like to make videos that make people think. Um, so disclaimer before I really start talking about my experience in theater as a black girl um, I want to start off by saying that if anyone who is watching this did theater with me This has nothing to do with um, people in particular This is more about theater in general and just how they a lot of roles within theater can perpetuate negative stereotypes of black people in particular black women um, So the story starts off in elementary school. I've always loved music and I've always loved performing Theater has been a big part of my life since I was very little um, in elementary school, they used to do little shows for grades 1 to 3 and then grades 4 to 5 would do a show. So basically throughout all those years, I always auditioned to be in the shows, but I never got a lead role. I was always in the chorus. And I'm not trying to brag or anything, but everyone said I was a really good singer and I know I can sing. So I was just always confused. I was like, why do I never get these roles? And the lead roles were always like these cute little white girls. And I went to a predominantly white school, so I was like one of the only black kids in my whole school. Um, so not many other people of color were there either, so I wasn't really shocked that I wasn't getting roles, but I was kind of disappointed. Um, so f grade five finally came around and I got a role in one of the small productions. It was just like this weird winter production, nothing big, nothing serious, you know, very low key. Um, I got a solo with this other guy in my class sang the solo it was great i did a really good job and it was funny when i actually sang the solo i saw people's people's reactions in the audience they were like oh my gosh that was so good and i was just like yeah it was good because i can sing and my music teacher just hasn't been giving me roles at all and i can't i hadn't been able to prove that i can sing but i can sing um and uh, my parents told me this recently but they said a lot of parents are coming up to them saying oh your daughter's so talented where does she do singing lessons says i never i've never taken professional singing lessons i only did a couple in high school for like the musicals but never at that age never did any of that um so obviously my parents were like oh wow like our daughter can actually sing the music teacher just was being obviously kind of discriminatory towards her and i'm not trying to say that the music teacher was racist but you know it's kind of coincidence that all the other parents like yo your daughter's looking a better singer than my daughter why is she not getting any daily roles and my parents recently my dad was talking to me about it. he was like yo you were really good when you're younger and like i was convinced that your music teacher was just like a racist because you were getting no none of these roles and i was like you know what probably right so after elementary school we get into middle school and grade seven was when i did my first real show because the elementary school shows were like not really real shows they were like little garden weird stuff and like the show i had a solo in was about like winter games so it was like singing about hockey it was weird it wasn't anything special it wasn't like a real broadway show but then grade seven our school did annie um, this was the very first like real show I was ever a part of and I remember the auditioning process I was super excited um, again my issue with Annie was that Annie is traditionally a white girl with ginger curly hair you know you know Annie great love that show and I remember auditioning and I was like you know what I doubt I'm gonna get it because I'm black and all my white friends were like, what do you mean? Like, you can still audition, like you might get it. I was like, yeah, you know what, you guys are right. Maybe I'll get it. You can just see how young you were and you're just so like out of tune with the whole reality of race and all that sort of thing. I already kind of understood, but a lot of my white friends were just like, I don't know. Again, still, I went to a different school in middle school, um, but still predominantly very white. Um, so yeah, basically I auditioned for Annie and I got callbacks and I was super excited. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Like I might actually be the lead. Like this is, this is great. And I remember practicing cause the song you had to sing for the callback was Tomorrow, right? You know, classic, you know, song. I'm not about to sing it. Anyways, I remember practicing in my living room, like that audition song. And I was so excited to audition. Like I was so excited. And then, Oh my gosh i go to the audition for annie right the lead role super nervous super excited and one of 
the casting director is one of the teachers obviously was like you know what I don't really know if you're fit for Annie like I can't really see you as Annie I think you'd be really good as Molly Molly was the other really small or I'm like she was the youngest one and I was always very short very skinny very short though I was like 411 until I was like in grade eight not even I was tiny and I was skinny so they're like okay you can be the youngest one but I was like what do you mean I don't fit the role like I can sing I can act I can dance he never said oh you're just not vocally as strong or oh you can't dance you just you don't fit the role and I that just hurt and I remember after the casting list came up because he didn't tell me that I didn't have any but I just knew after the audition I was like yeah there's no way and I remember seeing the list um, outside the music room and I remember going home and I was crying I remember just walking home from like my bus stop and I was just crying the whole time my parents were like okay like, is she good I was just I was so sad that I didn't get this role um, and like literally the main reason why I didn't get it based from what he said was that I didn't look the part basically saying you're black you can't be any and the gag is literally a couple of years later that Annie came out I forgot the main characters name but it was like Jamie Foxx was in it and the main girl playing and he was literally black and I just saw that I was like baby that could have been me like come on now um so this gets into the whole issue of typecasting oh, I despise typecasting I think it is useless unless sorry I just saw the biggest bug outside so sorry I just think typecasting is not necessary unless you refer to the character's physical attributes in the show what i mean by this let's take a show legally blonde for example legally blonde was the first show i did in high school in grade 10. it was a fun show i love legally blonde um and obviously you know elle woods she's blonde the show is called legally blonde so you need someone who's blonde to play the role um, but obviously the girl who played Elle in my school wasn't actually blonde. They just put a wig on her. That wig was awful, but she's great. Love her. She's watching this. Shout out to you. Great actress, great singer, like amazing, talented. Love her. Um, so she played Elle Woods. And my problem with typecasting within shows that are predominantly white is that it benefits white people more than black people based on the fact that there aren't many black roles in the shows that you do. So the shows I did in high school were Legally Blonde, Beauty and the Beast, and The Wizard of Oz. And one thing that just kind of made me mad about typecasting was like, oh, we need someone brunette, we need someone blonde. It's just like, you just know for a fact that if this show is typecasted or if the director decides I want someone who looks like the traditional role to play this then you know being a black person you're just out of the picture you're like there's no way you're gonna be a part of that show any like at all and you're just like dang <laughs> like you don't even have to tell me you just know um I think typecasting is dumb honestly and unless like I said you refer to their physical attributes in the show there's no point so for Annie you could have just I don't do they refer to her hair in the show I'm not sure if it's just one line you can take the line out um, and then for shows like Legally Blonde you can just put a blonde wig on someone they don't have to be a specific race right so I just feel like a lot of the times typecasting benefits white people more than black people based on the fact that there's not many black roles in true like really a lot older theater for example like Mary Poppins, Sound of Music, Music Man. It was actually really dope though. I saw the Music Man at Stratford um, Theater, amazing theater company. Oh, love them and they did the music man and the lead guy was black and I was like this is so dope like I love that nowadays with more progressive theater you see that a lot look at Hamilton for example um, having a bunch of people of color black people playing roles that are white people but not doing like putting white makeup on them it's just shows how theater is just theater and I feel like unless it's more of a serious show you don't really need the roles to be like exactly to the person you know the character that they're representing physically unless they refer to that in the actual show itself um one show that people 
wanted to do a lot in high school. Again, I went to a very white school. There were only like three black kids in theater, and I think there were like five black kids in my grade, maybe 15 black kids in the whole school of like 300 people. Not even, probably more than that. It was just, oh my gosh, one show that people always wanted to do was Hairspray. <sighs> Listen. I love Hairspray just as much as the next person. Hairspray is such a good show. The music's amazing. The acting's great. Love Hairspray. The thing with Hairspray that a lot of people don't understand is it's a very serious show in the sense that it talks about a very serious topic, civil rights movement in the 60s in the United States. It is the type of show that if you have non-black people playing the black characters in Hairspray, it's kind of like a punch to the face to black people. I am so sorry. And I remember people talk about, like when a show was over, um, people were like, ooh, what's the next show you wanna do? Cause they always kept that a secret from us to make us like anticipate what the next show was gonna be. And people would always be like, oh my gosh, we should do hairspray, we should do hairspray, we should do hairspray. And I'd always say, we don't have enough black kids to do hairspray. And then one girl jokingly said, she's like, oh, we can just paint their faces black. I was like, no. Gosh, and it was just so uncomfortable for me um, <clears throat> being like one of the only black people in that conversation I was like babe are you serious like we're not about to do that we're not about to do that uh, we're not about to paint people's faces black and it just shows the ignorance that a lot of people have about history of black people in North America in the United States and Canada and also the history of blackface in theater itself is so disgusting and the fact that people were jokingly saying oh we can just paint their faces black is just kind of disrespectful and just shows that a lot of people don't know anything about black people and why it's so important to educate each other and educate yourself before you talk. Um, I didn't think this person meant it in a hateful way whatsoever but it, it's just really heartbreaking to kind of see how people kind of look at Hairspray as a fun musical. It's a fun show, you know, Tracy, love her. Um, to the white people, it's a fun show, great music, it's a good message. But I feel like for black people, it's a show that is very important to us. Like for me in particular, Hairspray is one of my favorite musicals because of that aspect of the civil rights aspect of the show right that's why i love hairspray that's why hairspray is important to me but hairspray is important to you because you like tracy and uh you know and you just like uh, the, the songs i guess but for me it's the message and it just shows how us as black people things are more important than white people and they don't see the seriousness in these shows that we do like with with shows like hairspray i just personally feel like in theater they need to do a better job of teaching people in theater the importance of representation the history of racism and you know racial stereotypes within theater and how we can move past that and how we can do better in terms of making theater more inclusive and i will say theater is one of the most inclusive like not sports but like hobbies i guess i don't know what to call it like pastime what do you like extracurricular activities there we go yes it's one of the most inclusive extracurricular activities of people from all types of backgrounds you know body types like genders just coming together putting on this amazing show and it, it's one of those things that i truly love so much but i think we should do a better job in making it more inclusive and really making sure that people don't get left out or singled out because of things like typecasting because of things like racist directors and calling people out for saying racist things and showing people the importance of shows like hairspray and making sure people understand that this is more than just a musical and we need to respect it in the sense that it is wrong to have a bunch of white kids playing black characters um representing a very important time in history like the civil rights movement like i'm not about to be singing up on stage with a bunch of other white kids saying the black and the baby the sweet like i refuse <laughs> i refuse <laughs> cut the cameras like i i 
refuse to do that. And I even told them, I'm like, yo, if you guys wanna do hairspray, I'm not doing it because we don't have enough black people to do it. And unless I see more black people doing theater at our school, which was never gonna happen because we didn't have many black kids, um, we are not doing hairspray. And I will not do the show myself because I feel like it's disrespectful to those who were in the civil rights movement. I feel like it's disrespectful just to a lot of people. Um, <clears throat> but to end on a positive note, I feel like theater is a beautiful thing. It's a very inclusive extracurricular activity and it's definitely getting better, but I feel like we can do a lot more by educating ourselves on the history of theater, educating ourselves on negative stereotypes in theater and making sure that it's a beautiful, inclusive experience for all kids of all genders, ethnicities, backgrounds, and making sure people feel welcome in theater no matter who they are or where they come from. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want more commentary videos like this, I can totally do that. Um, but please subscribe to the channel, like this video if you like it. And yeah, have a great day.